What's up, everybody? This is your girl, CC, where Where It Begins Magazine. And today is Wednesday. We have a special guest on the line with us. I'm going to let him introduce himself and who he is and what he does. Yep, it's Mix 718, fresh out of Staten Island. I've been making music for like three years. Got the Snapchat video coming out this Friday. Got a lot of different things moving and shaking. Been making a lot of waves, shaking the room. Awesome. Well, what made you want to get into the music industry? I used to be a dancer first. So, like, originally I was on some professional. I wanted to go to, like, the casting calls and get involved with commercials and all that stuff. And at the time I was DJing. So it's like I was always around music. I just wasn't doing it myself. But then I started hearing some real whack music come out uh, around, like, 2016, 2017. I was like, yeah, bro, these rappers can't do nothing that I can do right now. So I might as well. I was like, I'm going to put out better music than they are. I'm tired of hearing whack stuff. <laughs> Okay, so that goes to my next question was, what do you think is missing in today's music? Me. <laughs> Me. But what, I mean, what makes your music so different? I feel like the reason, like my music is, is way too dimensional. I got too many different things going on at the same time. I make sure to, to try to hit as many different elements, many, as many different environments as possible. Try to make it fun for everybody. I want to be able to have at least one song that everybody in the world is going to be like, yep, that's my favorite Migs song. You feel me? I always, I want to, I want to be able to make an impact on everybody and not just with my music. I feel like the reason why they need me in their life is because I'm going to start incorporating a lot of crazy visuals, start incorporating a lot of different creativity that I got going on. It's not just the music. I'm, I'm an artist altogether. So I know I got a lot of different plans, a lot of different things in motion. It's going to be a whole different type of wave once I start getting on, getting on for real, for real. Okay. I got you. So Let's go to this then. Who would be your top five females and male artists? Who's your top five then? Since these people can't rap no more. <laughs> Who would be your top five? <laughs> well, not all of them, but a, a large chunk was really getting me. But um, my top five, it goes Method Man. It goes DMX. I'm rocking DMX right now. RIP. <sighs> Biggie. Um, Busta Rhymes. And... Just because of the inspiration and the impact that he's made, Travis Scott would be in my top five. Mm, that's different compared to the other artists I'd be interviewing. Okay, okay, I like those. Yeah, what about I got, the top I got some five favorites. women? Top five women, it would have to be Faith. It would mm. have to be uh, Erica Badu. I love Erica Badu. I, I don't, I think her, her voice is ridiculous. Um, yeah. Eve, Slept okay. On. Um... Remy, Ooh. and Nikki. I think Nikki Minaj definitely should be up there. Okay, those, those are, are my top, top five, five for females. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So, who are some people you would love to collab with? Collaboration-wise, I'm trying to work with anybody from country music to techno music. So in all reality, it's a big list. But if we're, sta if we're staying straight, just rap, male-wise, I definitely want to work, like, especially with people that are just doing something different. Like, I really want to do something with Don Tolliver. I really want to do something with, um, but I also want to keep, you know, to, to the roots, too, and be able to work with people out in New York. Honestly, I, like, I, I've been saying it for the longest. I've been wanting to work with Busy Banks and Ross Swish for like a year and a half, two years now. So there's a lot of different things that I'm trying to focus on and try to make work. So once I'm able to start really, really getting in those rooms, the, the, the tracks that I'm putting out with these people are going to be some other shit because they're not expecting me to spaz the way I'm going to spaz on these tracks. Female-wise, I've been really wanting to work with Dream Doll. Dream Doll is, she can spit. Dream Doll can rap her ass off. And I think that's, that's dope. I, I like hearing the, the females that can really rap rap. It's not just the the city girls. I'm shaking ass and all that other stuff. I like the rappers. Um, okay. And Tierra Wack. Tierra Wack is a dope female artist that I feel like gets really slept on under the radar. <clears throat> and we would rap. I know for a fact we could go for 32s back and forth and she could probably out rap me at some points, but I know I'm a spaz on her first time I get on a track. All right, all right. Well, where are we going today? Since you got some favorites going on, who would you think would be a great versus? Great the verses, like for other. today? Yeah. They go against um, each other. I feel like put Young Money against YSL. Mm. 
because okay. you got Drake, you got Nikki, you got Tyga, you got Wayne. But then mm -hmm. on YSL, you got Thug, you got Gunna, you got Baby. There's mad people on both sides that just have hits after hits after hits. And I feel like that would be mad fun. And it would be, it would definitely be good for the culture. Now, and I'm gonna put you on the spot. Who would you go against? Who would you pick out of them two? <laughs> I would pick Young Money. Young Money, absolutely. Like, I love oh, wow. YSL. Like, I like Thug a lot. I like Gunna a lot. But in all reality, I still know all the lyrics to the motto. Like, that came out in 2011. Like, I, I know, like, there are, there are songs that, like, are classics that are never going to go away, that they're going to be around for, forever. I don't think YSL has all of those. I think Young Money has them. Got in the bag. I'll go with them, too. I'll go with them too. But let's talk about your single and the motivation behind it. Uh, yeah. Snapchat just dropped that July 30th. Um, Snapchat is is me talking about stuff that I'm I'm not usually that comfortable talking about. The grimy stuff, but just trying to make it a good time. It's me talking about like in all reality, Snapchat and like Venmo and all of these things are not good for the line of work I was in because I don't like a paper trail. So it was basically getting across the things that were going on and how I was handling things, the different ways I was talking to people, the different, the different ways I moved. Like I even say, I say on the track how I sit rum, don't pass me vodka. I, I, I like cash app, don't give me Venmo. You know, I, I'm basically giving y'all the, the pinpoint on how I was moving. And it's just fun. I like getting, you know, getting rowdy and turning shit up for a little bit. So it's more fun when I'm able to just mac out and turn something that isn't, that, you know, isn't really the best situation into something that's, way more fun and turn it into a positive, you feel me? Mm. So do you think about taking that song and doing like a TikTok trending to it? I mean, I have the video coming out. So in all reality, I want to push the video. I want, cause that visual is, is very well put together. And I, I'm really enjoying the direction that everything is going. Everything is moving real smooth. And that video, I'm just trying to get that video all over the place. I'm just trying to put it in front of everybody's face. I got you. I got you. So what do you see yourself in the next couple of years? You want the one year, the three year, or the five year? Let's, <laughs> let's do three years. Let's do three years. In three years, I definitely expect to have at least two pieces of real estate under my name. Mm -hmm. I expect I expect to have at least at least a gold record. At least. Okay. Um and I expect to do I want to at least be on my own like national tour, not like, you know, how like if you do like a, an East Coast tour, that's cool. If you do a West Coast tour, that's cool. I'm talking about my first national tour where I'm the headliner three years. I feel like that's a that's a pretty good estimate for me. Okay. So thinking of this touring, where are some places you would love to tour and perform it? Just give me about three. Give me three. <laughs> if we're saying in the U.S., because I'm trying to go all over the world. Um, mm -hmm. in Just three in your top. Your top three, whether it's in the U.S. or not. Japan. I'm trying to go to Tokyo. Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to go to London. And I def I I've been fiending to go out to Nashville to perform. I want to perform in Tennessee. Because that's such a big hub for music. And I know they would love me down there. Everywhere down mm -hmm. south. I see you. So what has been like the biggest challenge so far of being an artist? Dealing with other people. <laughs> yeah, because half the time they don't understand what, I, what we're saying as creatives. Half, half the time they don't uh, or they don't want to understand it. It's like they feel like it's a, it's a one way route. And in all reality, there's no right or wrong way to do this stuff. So when people get in the way or when they flake or when they, they don't hold their, their word, that's the only thing you really got to worry about, I feel. As long as you stay true to your stuff and you make sure that your circle is tight and keep your team motivated, and the team helps motivate you, you're straight. It's just making sure that you get the right amount, of, the right group of people around you. Because not everybody is nice. Not everybody can rap. Not everybody can sing. That's people got to, it's learning, learning how to figure out who's going to be in my circle. Who do I want to round? Who do I want to keep? Who do I want to throw chains on when I'm when I got like a quick five hundred thousand dollars? I want to be able to throw chains on my people, but I don't want a million. I want five, six at most. Okay. Well, how do you think that the internet has impacted the music industry? Attention spans are nothing now. 
Yeah, everybody needs something quick. They need it right then and there, convenient. Get it moving, yeah. get it moving, get it moving. You can't you can't go out into the middle of the city anywhere and just start fucking handing out CDs. It doesn't work as well. Everyone's on, on the streams. Everybody has, even if it's SoundCloud. SoundCloud's free. And a lot of music is on SoundCloud. So that's the thing, is making sure that you're putting more of a an imprint on the internet than you are because you're, you're going to have way more options. You're going to be able to send it out to everybody. You can get in front of everybody, but it's just figuring out how to get in front of everybody. That's the biggest issue that I have with the internet and music right now. Mm. So what do you think of some of like, tell me some of the advantages and disadvantages, basically. Advantages? Like, what do you think is a great advantage of it? Advantage for sure. I can put my, my music, I can put my video, I can put anything that I'm putting out in front of anybody, well, at least in front of any area in the world. Mm -hmm. Promotion gives you the means to put it out. You know, I could put a, a whole ad in like India if I wanted to. I could put an ad in South Africa if I wanted to. And it's like being able to target the areas that listen to your music. Like I do a lot of promotion in Germany because Germany loves my music. Mm. So it's like being able to, I don't even have to worry about it. Oh, are they gonna see it? No, I'm putting it in their city. Like, that's the cool thing about the internet is being able to do your own advertisement and not have to go through a third party all the time. It's just figuring out what third party could be beneficial and what you can do to make the promo on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and all that stuff work for you. Because people aren't paying attention to that stuff. And in all reality, that promo stuff is one of the biggest ways for us to make our music move as much as we can. Disadvantage-wise, though, there's 500,000 people a day dropping music. That's you true. need to make sure your music is, or just everything about what you're putting out has to be different. Something that's going to capture them. Something that's going to take them to a different place. Something that's going to change their emotion. They, whether they love the song or they love the video or they love the way you had the, the graphic edited, whatever it was. Just finding a way to hook them in. That's true. So by you turning your... By you being an artist, what do you think is the top three things that artists need to know? How to protect your money. Okay. Um, like songwriting royalties and mechanical royalties, all that stuff. Google search is a wonderful thing. You look up, how can I protect my music? You're straight. Um, not Don't get married to anything that you write like within the first couple of days because it could turn into something completely different. Don't get discouraged over that type of stuff because there's plenty of times where I've written a verse that didn't get used for a year and a half because it finally worked and I could frankly sign it into a better song. Mm. So be patient with yourself creative wise um, because once you rush things, it doesn't come out the way that you intended it to. And sometimes things fall into place better than if you try to push them. Um, and have fun. This is supposed to be fun. Like this is supposed to be fun be you enjoy yourself like i'm gonna be real with you i'm the type to do a backflip in the middle of a club just because i like to do that stuff not for anybody else do stuff that is fun for you fun for the people around you so you can in create an environment at all at all times because if you're out at any event and you're you know you're real you know super super serious you're not going to have as much fun you're not going to be able to make those connections if you're not having a good time try to make the best out of every situation don't matter everything is a rep in the gym that goes to my next question was, um, what's a fun fact about yourself? <laughs> I, I, I actually, matter of fact, this is a perfect one for me. I have okay. a katana. I have a katana and I didn't buy it. I won it because I did jujitsu when I was younger. So I'm real with you. I'm like a ninja for real. Like, Ooh. like I, I was on my, like for real, my jujitsu shit goes crazy. And my katana is beautiful. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it all iced out eventually. I'm gonna have that hanging up in my house. Do you think you're gonna do something like that for one of your videos? Hell yeah. You kidding me? I'm gonna do, <laughs> you know, like, I'm so serious. Like, you know, the Kung Fu movies, like the Seven Towers of Terror or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna do some crazy shit. Watch. Once, once I'm like, cause you need like resources for that. I wanna be able to get like the right people to, to do the, the fight choreography with me. Cause I know how to fight. I know how to do that shit. So I'm going to be able to incorporate that. I know how to flip. I'm like, it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait for that. Like I said, I'm an artist. I, I've been learning how to do a bunch of other shit and I didn't realize it was going to help me later. So me knowing how to flip helps. Me knowing how to dance helps. Me knowing how to fight helps. All that stuff, I can incorporate it into my career. I got you. 
So, so far in your career, what has been your biggest accomplishment? My biggest accomplishment, there's a lot that like kind of are even with each other because I've done a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. Okay. Biggest accomplishment right now, definitely my performance in Times Square. It was like 5,000 people and it was, it was freezing cold. It was like 20 degrees outside. Everybody was cold, but there was like 5,000 people really standing out there and were listening to me. And it was like, that was such a different experience for me because I was used to doing like, at most there was like four or 500 people in a bar or a club. And it was like, all right, this is cool. But seeing that amount of people in front of you, that changes your whole perspective. It makes you feel like a superstar for real, for real. It makes you feel like every, all eyes are on you. So that's definitely at least my, my favorite moment in my career so far has been being on stage and not feeling nervous, just feeling mad excited about it. Okay, okay. So do you have any upcoming projects or events or any, um, you know, any um, shows coming up? Well, right now, everything is focused on Snapchat. Everything is popping on the video, but I have so much music vaulted right now and okay. I'm trying to set up a lot of real, real big moves for my music. I'm going to start putting out a lot more frequently, a lot more consistent because I took my time when it came to some of these tracks. I really wanted to make sure that they were coming out as good as possible. So I'm going to have wavy videos. I'm, I'm trying to push more visuals, more visuals, more than anything. Get out some real good music videos. My Vivo channel is already set up. I'm linked up with videos. So now a lot of prom like promo shit is going to be very, very fun for us because I already get the numbers. Now it's just multiplying them, making them bigger and bigger, getting the promo out there. I'm constantly working on new music. I've been in the studio every week, at least two, three times a week. So I've been just cranking out songs. I got a lot of music to drop. So project wise, just think, just worry about the singles for right now. Cause I'm, I'm going to be putting in some work definitely for album mode and stuff. To be honest with you, I'm thinking about it. I'm really thinking about it. I don't know if I want to do an album yet. That's a lot of effort. Well, congratulations. But that goes to my next question. Out of all the tracks that you've done, what's your favorite two? My favorite two? Okay, seven. Okay, seven and why you chose I was, that one? Because it reminded me of Busta Rhymes. Yeah, mm. I, had a, I had a great, like, I was really, I, I was really in the vibe when I was recording that too, like, I didn't stop for more than maybe like two, three takes. Like I really spazzed on that whole song. I didn't have to chop nothing. I only did two mixes on it. The song came out great. Everybody likes that song when I perform it. It's mad fun to perform. Everybody knows the hook because it's just counting. And then I, I, it's just a great like hype song for me. It's like, it just makes me happy to rap it, especially considering I was just having so much fun on the way that I was rhyming my words. I be really going crazy with my pen, smoke blunt just start writing seven was a great great song for me um okay. and Mavado. Mavado, because it's it's my my most streamed song and so far there's been i've never had a bad reaction to that song and that's just cool to me it's like oh i have a piece that's actually pretty good all around like every like i've never heard nobody tell me they don't like that song it's like, that's a, that's a cool thing to me, especially when fans are like, yo, I, I really love that song, Movado. I get that more than anything. So it's just cool hearing that and knowing that like that song, I put a lot of time into that song. I did like 16 mixes. I spent three months working on that song compared to seven. So it's like, I love the one that I put the most time and energy in. And I love the one where it was just all natural and organic and it was just flowing because sometimes it takes all that precision, it takes all that timing and trying to put it together Sometimes it doesn't, and I think that's dope. I think that's the best part about my music. You have no idea if my music, if I wrote it that day, if I wrote it a year ago, or if I wrote it three weeks from now. It's just, it's cool to know, like, I'm able to bounce around and enjoy myself and still put out good music. Okay. And congratulations. Oh. <laughs> it's, I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait mm -hmm. to hear those that you talked about them. You got to send oh, yeah. them to me. Yeah, For them. sure. Are you kidding me? Your email is going to be booked. I'm gonna have like 17 songs in yours. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. But what has been the best piece of advice you ever received? Um, not to expect anything. Mm. Going open-minded on everything. Like, don't expect nothing. Prepare for the worst, but pray for the best. It's like, as long as I walk in, in the spot not expecting nothing, and I, I am who I am the way I am, I'm straight. Like, as long as, like, if, 
if something good is going to happen, then it's, it's meant to happen. Trying to force or push or pressure anything or be annoying about anything never actually helps. It makes things worse. So patience is key in making sure that you know what's going on around you. I enjoy knowing that I don't really care about nobody else's opinion when I walk in the door. I don't care about if I'm going to win something, if I'm going to make a connect or any of that. I go in there just to network in general. If everybody wants to talk, then everybody wants to talk. If nobody wants to talk, then nobody wants to talk. Right. Just go with the flow and, and make sure that everything is organic. Make sure everything feels right. Mm, I got you. I got you. I got one more question before we go into our fun fact questions that I like to ask. Um, I would say, what is one message you would like to give to your fans right now? Oh, I love y'all. You're amazing. Because, like, I never would have expected the, the the places that are listening to my music, like the, the people in Paris that listen to my music, the people in Germany that listen to my music, the people in South Africa and Venezuela. Like, I love those people because they show me the most love. I love everybody that, that doesn't know me and is a real fan of my music. So I, I appreciate it. The, the views have been going crazy. I've been able to get so many more opportunities because of y'all. So I greatly appreciate everybody that's been listening to my music and rocking with me, whether it's been for a year, a week, two years, three years, all that. To be honest with you, I just love everybody. Okay. And I got mad stuff coming out soon. So just prepare, prepare, just stay tuned. You know, we moving. I can't wait. I can't wait. But let's go into my two fun fact questions. If you could trade places with one person for one day, who would it be and why? Take your time. <laughs> uh, hmm. Right now? Drake. Mm. He is in the middle of the best beef in the world. He is in the middle of the best marketing, best crazy, like wild, dramatic stuff in the world. It's a movie. His life right now is a movie. He lives in a, a what, a $23 million mansion or whatever it is. He's enjoying life. And he's got all his endorsements. I just want to know what that, that feels like for a quick second. See if it's as toxic as I really think it is. <laughs> I just want to see what it's like having all those eyes on you and knowing how that feels. Walking through the spot and everybody knowing who you are right then and there, no matter where you go. Pull up on a Jamba Juice. Everybody's like, yo, it's Drake. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's oh, fucking crazy to me. Mm. So my second question is, what's the most adventurous thing you've ever done in your life? I went to South Africa. That was adventurous. Oh. Hell yeah. Well, I mean, it, was, it wasn't like, I, I didn't choose to go out there. It was part of like, an internship I was involved with but while I was out there I like I didn't realize how much fun I was going to end up having I didn't realize how much I was going to learn all of the different places and the different cultures and seeing what was going on and just learning about history learning about the culture learning about what's going on um South Africa was crazy we went I stayed in a, a prison communal cell for a night mm -hmm. <laughs> we slept there stayed in the the slums stayed in a nice hotel stayed in a random ass house like we went all over the place so it was like backpacking through south africa that was the coolest shit i ever did in my life i was like whoa what is happening right now i'm 16 years old and all i knew was new york brooklyn staten island manhattan and queens i would go to the bronx once in a blue moon so all i knew was staten island more than anything so it was like a real big culture shock that was definitely the most fun the most adventurous i've ever felt we did some cool ass shit. Okay. Well, at least you got a test to experience that. Oh yeah, know? it's the only time I've been out of out of the States. So I'm 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 thankful I was smart enough to get into that internship. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a blessing. You know, you never know. You know, at least you stuck yourself out there. Especially but, because I didn't like that. I didn't like going to school. So I got my internship just because they liked my test grades. So I was like, yep, good thing. I moved the way that I moved because I wouldn't, I would have never had that experience. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. That's a blessing, you know, to be able to see a different culture over there. I wouldn't mind visiting myself. I wouldn't mind just seeing something different. But um, before we go, I, before we get off, tell everybody where they can follow you. Y'all can follow me at MIG718 on everything. M-I-G-S 718. 
If you go on YouTube, it's Mix 718. You go on Apple Music, it's Mix 718. You go on Deezer, you can go on MySpace. I'm pretty sure I'm even on MySpace Music. I don't even know. To be honest with you, I'm on everything. Amazon, Google Play, anything you got, I'm on it. If you go to Facebook, it's the real Mix 718. It's the only one that's different. Go to my website, <laughs> Mix718.com. We moving. MLM Entertainment has been moving real heavy. So make sure y'all stay tuned. Y'all don't want to miss the wave before it goes. I got you. Well, I want to say congrats on your music. Thanks for interviewing with us. Um, I like your attitude, though. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> having a good time. Like I said, you know, this is this is supposed to be art. This is supposed to be something that's, yes. that's love-based. So I have a good time regardless. People want to try me then that's on them. But I'm always happy. And I, like, I try my best to keep everything as positive as possible. I got you. Well, stay grinding. Stay in the same zone that you're in. Don't let nobody change Hell that, yeah. you know? <laughs> and I can't wait to see this video that's, that you got, that you're working on. And hopefully I'll be able to see the Ninja one soon. You're going to get that. We're going to talk that in existence there. Hell yeah. <laughs> But no, um, you have a happy Wednesday. Be blessed and, you know, continue with your grind. Same to you. Thank you for having me, for real. Yeah, I like to tell everybody this, that you gain a fan here, so I'll be checking you out. Definitely. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Have a good one.